like I do a show and I didn't, I don't, I didn't feel good about it. But there are times where I, I did something with my group that were, that I just was so proud of. And I'm so glad I could have given it to that crowd that we all uh, just kind of shared that thing. So it's a gift. Yeah, it, it is. is a gift. I mean, I, like it's, I could give better gifts sometimes. Sure. <laughs> you know, sometimes I'm regifting or like, uh, or like giving something <laughs> that I didn't want in my house or whatever. Uh, but I, but I really, I, I really love the idea that like, that's something that none of their friends could get, you know, like they, we shared that moment and then it's, and then I will remember it forever. There are certain shows that I just, I could, I could literally just react out for you right now. So you remember the blue paint. Uh, yeah. 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 But, but you wouldn't. I don't No, I don't remember any of it. Yeah. Uh, I take excessive notes when I'm coaching and teaching because otherwise I'll be like, I don't know what just happened, but I feel good. Uh, <laughs> and that means you did a good show, uh, but I can't teach like that. Right. right. So my, uh, I like it. I like it because there isn't anything else in the world like it in that we, yeah, like Wendell's saying, when you're doing a show and there's a crowd of people, they all get to feel this experience and be part of it. And it's visceral. And it's like, we're all feeling the same things. So like, for instance, um, on Saturday, uh, when they did the megaphone show, I was going to bring that they up. They were so good. It seemed like they were all connected, the audience in the stage. Absolutely. The like whole, a Grateful Dead concert. Absolutely. The whole room, it's the synergy. Yeah. yeah it's the synergy. They felt it. Everybody in that room, the only people that ever get to experience that or those like hundred people that were there. Mm -hmm. I mean, everyone felt the same thing. If they were warm, we were all warm. If it were like, uh, you know, when people laughed at things, they were together. It was mm -hmm. like such a full unifying moment. And we don't have those, you know, like, like a sketch show can be like that, but I, I guess the energy is slightly lower. And um, with a sketch show, like, People, performers and the audience have different expectations for what's going on. They like, they're like, you put effort into this and you wrote it and then you rehearsed it. If it's not quote perfect and perfect is a variable that means many mm -hmm. things to different people. If it's not quote perfect, they're not into it. Like right. there are some times when like, I, I'll do a sketch show where we do two of the same show in a month. And if somebody comes and sees the second show or, or sees both shows and they can say, oh, well, you did it better last time. That means they yeah, were taken right. out of the experience to yeah. have to reflect upon how that went or whatever. Or like they know the person. So they're like, I remember when they wrote this or whatever it might be. They're not fully in the moment. Whereas right. when you're in improv, it's being created in front of you, it's a magic trick it's of comedy, energy, and yeah. and everyone's in on it. It gets created by the audience. When the audience reacts, that's what makes the comedy. It's right. not like we're going to do this joke, whether or not you guys like it. If if you're talking about cars for ten minutes, or not ten minutes, but if you're talking about cars <laughs> for one minute. And then the audience laughs when somebody sneezes that you're talking about sneezes. I mean, sneezes are it forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the fact of like letting the audience guide you through that thing and just being open to that. I don't know. There's something magical and wonderful. It's a about different it. energy. My argument is, a, is it a better energy? Uh, because there's an energy to coming up with a sketch idea that I love. <laughs> I love like I said in the workshop, uh, I'm walking my dog summer and I think of a sketch idea. I drag summer home and then uh, summer and I start writing the sketch. Um, there's an energy that. Uh, I'll follow the steps of the energy. Oh, I just thought of the greatest sketch idea ever. Uh, now I'm writing it. I'm a little disappointed because it never looks good on paper. Um, I'll look at it the next day. Oh, I keep working on it. It's getting back to the energy of the idea, and that's yeah. energetic. And then I write the sketch, and I'm, oh, my God, this is great. And then I read it to the kids in the hall, and, it's, uh, and they get laughs. Um, and then the moment where it's performed... Is this, then again, I'm about to defeat my own argument. Uh, <laughs> even if it does well, I gotta admit, that's my second favorite energy of that. My favorite is the first time I thought of the idea. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So um, that's the, yeah. exactly and, that's what the improv mm -hmm. is. The first time you thought of that idea, yeah, yeah, yeah. it exists and it's perfect. Mm -hmm. It's like it's like love at first sight. Right, right. Which, which, you know, real life, whatever, who cares? That doesn't exist in the, in the like real love. It's like infatuation. It's the same with this moment. You're like, ooh, that's fun. Yeah. Well, and see, to me, I, I guess, it, cause there is a marriage between sketch and improv. Right. Oh, yeah. You know, we do do Grateful Dead shows. You do. Oh, and, you do. And, and there's a special energy when we break from it and we. Yeah. And uh, even, even as, you know, a musician or as a sound guy, like there, there's an amount of improv. There's an amount of this is what we do all the time, every time. And whatever happens in between is what happens in between. But for me, I guess coming from a theater background, because that's where I started my tech world was in eighth <laughs> grade and theater and all that kind of stuff. And 
to see the world of theater now, to see um, shows like, um, let's just say something iconic, Phantom of the Opera, you know, Les Miserables, that even though they've been around for years, um, are now an evolving show. There are songs that right. come in and go out. Is that true? Yeah, yeah, and it's literally become that way, and it blows my mind to yeah, know that these, these were like writ in stone shows. Right. But yet, still, it's gotten to the point because the evolving theater concept has come about. It really started with Jekyll and Hyde and stuff like that, where you know, <clears throat> every other year they would add a new song. Is they would the add original, a new thing. The original writers or the new writers? Yeah. Yeah, and and there so are we'll new writers that they bring in too, yes. but it's it's mm -hmm. interesting to see that like as things change in society and stuff like that, that this this what people thought was right. written in concrete concept yeah. um, actually starts changing and morphing. And how mu how much of that do y'all do in your sketch writing? And because I know Amy, even with the with the neighborhood, has used a few sketch uh, a few sketches here and there that have been repeats and stuff. Oh yeah. Um, how how many times do you actually? Um, rewrite things in accordance to how the audience reacts because I know bands do it all the time where it's like dude when we hit this lick like people went nuts and it was one of those like right the the ninja in me had that recorder <laughs> in my rack every time so our hour and a half half long show was recorded and everybody left with it on a thumb drive to rehearse it like football footage right yeah. I'm, so I'm gonna ask your last question in a second yeah. uh, I'm gonna go back to a few uh, few points you were making sure sorry uh, no no it's good uh, <laughs> I touched them uh, uh, <laughs> It's funny because uh, the sketch, the um, the the Dave and I did in the kitchen hall that we hear about the most, is a sketch called Citizen Kane. Um, uh, it doesn't matter what it's about, uh, but it's um, <laughs> but it's about a guy uh, who saw a movie last night and he's describing exactly Citizen Kane, but he refuses to believe. It, and uh, I play the guy who gets mad at Citizen Kane. Now, um, <laughs> yeah. the people who love that sketch who come up to me, seventy-five percent of them have only seen it on the TV show. It has become a completely different sketch. And I always feel disappointed. Oh, you've only seen the TV show. It's it's become so much more alive uh, through us performing it for the year. In fact, now it's starting to get dead a bit because we performed it uh, for like 30 years. Um, <laughs> but for the first 20 years, we were sort of rewriting it, not with paper and pen and not before the scene, doing the scene. Uh, yeah. And it became it's a, a completely different, not a completely different thing, a more evolved thing. Uh, sure. And that's the Citizen Kane I'm proud of. When I see the show one, it seems flat. Yeah. Uh, but that's the one that seems more like a sketch of the sketch. Yeah, exactly. But and I've uh, I'm pointing at the wrong song. Oh no, this is great for that. Uh, Jerry Garcia said the same thing. That yeah. he's disappointed with so many songs. Um, he never liked the recording process. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and the, the way the songs really are now are the way that he does them live, even though he did them differently all the time. Oh yeah, and every I know night, dead, by the way, I know every night. Is and I like to speak in the present tense. <laughs> oh, so do, you, do you know where he, he like the secret? He's we still know. Out. Yeah, yeah, no, no, <laughs> he's out there. He's doing it. <laughs> he's out there. He's tired of you guys listening. I've, to got, I've got a bag of dust. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. Um, you were uh, going to react to more. Oh, things. now I forget. What was your last uh, question? Oh no! Here just here. how how frequently do y'all do stuff like that? How frequently is it that you take something that you've written and morph it every time? To, yeah. to every time, what the, because we never okay. plan it. If we sit yeah. down and plan it, uh, like on our tour bus before the show tonight, we're going to morph that scene. Oh no, 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 no! I know right. you don't mean that. Yeah. Uh, but I want my, the microphone to know yeah. that um, <laughs> the inanimate object in the room. Yes, it happens naturally. No, no thumbs or soul. No, like I bet Grateful Dead. Uh, the first, their first few gigs, they thought they were going to play their songs that they'd written. Yeah, and then um, the songs started evolving, and um, and why are their live uh, albums uh, better than their, uh, or at least more popular? Yeah, I actually like. Uh, I I love the studio albums of the day. Working Man's myself. Dead and oh, uh, American Beauty are the two best have, albums. Absolutely, ever. and Garcia's first <laughs> solo album. Yes, yeah, yes. I could talk Grateful Dead. And, uh, <laughs> Yeah, I could talk German. <laughs> and to me, it, to me, I guess it's the fact of there is that improv. There, it, you know, it's it's the synergy. Like I, I explain it to people all the time, and they look at me like I'm a freaking hippie Fruit Loop. Um, but <laughs> literally, with the bands that I worked with in that capacity, I could just like they could. Whenever you're on stage and you can feel when that change is coming, yeah, you can feel that crescendo, like. Yes you're tied into the stage and you can feel it and you can feel when the audience right. ties in between you but i'm also a ninja because i gotta admit uh the songs from american beauty and uh working man's dead 
uh, they bore me when I hear the live versions. I like the tight free yeah, version. Exactly. Stuff. So I'm just contradicting myself. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, it was like we were talking about um, in the workshop about the idea that like you need structure so that you know what the structure is so that right. you can break the rules. You need That's the rules right. to break the rules. Yeah, Absolutely. if you didn't exactly. know what the rules were, you would be. You just would just be yeah. chaotically uh, breaking rules with that. Like it would just be chaos. Right. I was, I was actually uh, talking about that because um, I just started taking sketch. Uh, well, I like I finished sketch one and going to start sketch two. Um, now, uh, like tomorrow. Um, <laughs> Good luck. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm excited. I'm excited. I love the teacher. Yeah, it's gonna be great. Um, but I, I brought my younger brother and a buddy that I work with in because it was one of those things. Like my younger brother is not like me. He doesn't want to perform. He he wants to make comedy, but he's not really about everybody looking at him all the time. Sure. So I was like, all right, birthday present. I'll sign you up for sketch one. I'll take it with you. You know, I've been doing improv, uh -huh. you know, for a while. So I started taking it, and it's one of those things where. You know, the, that class, I felt like, I was like, okay, now this is, I learned all of this in improv, just in a just in a different way, like the three right. beats, uh, you know, like fish out of water, that kind of stuff. Uh, but oh, yeah, younger, even when I say who you are, where you are, what you, that's the that, uh, works in both worlds. Sorry, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but my younger brother and my friend are like, whoa, three beats, I never thought about that. And it's like, I have been thinking about three beats since I was like eight. Like, where I just yeah. understand the formula and stuff. Three right. verses in a song, man. Yeah, no, I mean, it just, it's, that's how it works. <laughs> right. Yeah. But um, my yeah. buddy was telling me about how, like, he does, like, he, he, he thinks the three beats thing is kind of old hat. And it's something that, like, he's like, well, I'd, I'd just rather, like, think outside of the rules. And I was like, well... I get it because that's sort of the point is you like you learn the basics right. so that you know how to evolve that and how to change it for you. You know, it's like absolutely. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna interrupt you because I'm a pig. Oh no, yeah, because uh, you've got it. <laughs> no, no, I mean you have to learn it. Though I'm a delightful Canadian pig, but you, you've got to know the rules. Uh, Elvis Costello, who was my favorite songwriter for mm, a while, yeah. uh, he uh, when he first started writing when he was a teenager. He wrote. He said basically Beatles songs, uh, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge. And then when he wrote and wrote, um, by his third or fourth album, he was doing stuff like verse, bridge, yeah. then chorus, yeah. and it didn't seem forced or pretentious, right. because he knew what he was doing, and it, yeah. it sort of it can flow more organically when yeah. you know what a rule breaking can even flow more organically when you know what you're doing. But you, he had to have those three or four years where he wrote verse, chorus, bridge, or, yeah. sorry, verse, yeah. chorus, verse, chorus, well, it's, bridge. It's yeah. it, it's like Ralph Macchio learning wax on and wax off. You've got to learn the fundamentals, <laughs> you know. Like yeah, before, but, before you can block example, a punch, you have to learn the mechanics of blocking a punch, my friend. You can't right, just right. have one thrown at you at full speed. Are we going to fight each other now? Yeah. <laughs> if you're a redhead, only example. one redhead can exist in the room at the same time. The only problem so. with that example, however, is that um, in Karate Kid, he was unaware of what he was learning, and I think it is more important personally for a person to be right. aware of oh, the sure. rules. Oh, sure, real world application like, of that. Yeah. Like, yeah. well, not even that. Like. We are. This is the rules of the game, and then you can break the rules of the game. Well, if you're, teaching, if you're yeah. teaching punk kids, it's a different thing. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it was an illegal <laughs> movie. Yeah, like, oh, no, it isn't. You think that you think I don't teach punk kids all day? Because I do. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, like, punk kids are my specialty. No, I'm just. Uh, I'll structure the shit out of them, <laughs> and they'll love it. Um, but no, no. But to to the point that Kevin was making, uh, yeah. you really do need to spend the time actively creating within the rules before you are able to break them. Because I, it really always bothers me when um, like level one students, like sketch one students will be like the first assignment, they hand me something that like has nothing to do with it. And they're like, yeah, this is just what I thought. I'm like, that's super great, but come back with the assignment and then I'll be happy with whatever. Yeah, and right, like, right, right. yeah but I wrote this and I was like, yeah, I, I write everything every day. Like that doesn't <laughs> matter. I'm not yeah. fulfilling. This is a class where there's an assignment and you need to do that assignment. Absolutely. Why? Because you need to know how to do that one thing. And yeah. that sometimes when people don't do it, I'll tell the class, guys, I'm not teaching you this because, like, I'm trying to be crazy and I'm trying to be, like, <laughs> yeah. ridiculous, like, strong arm. I want you to have the ability so that, say, say your career moves forward and you're working in, say you get Saturday Night Live. They are like, we need you to write a character sketch for this actor. Right. You need to know how to do that. Right. If you're like, well, listen, I only know how to do premise-based sketches. Well, screw you, because that's not <laughs> what they need right now. Right. They need a character sketch, and if you don't know how to create that, right. uh, and even we were talking about how it, Saturday Night Live, as an example, does a lot of game-based three-beat sketches. Yeah, yeah. They do that. It's simple. It's quick. It's easy to put in the like television format, yeah. and the audience gets it. They're like, oh, he's a jerk. Oh, he's a jerk again. Third time he's a jerk i love it woo uh like but 
But like a lot of people are like, oh, I don't like that. I'm not into it. Great. That's awesome. But you need to know how to do it right. because the industry in which you potentially would like to get a job. Absolutely.